Hi everybody and welcome to another event from the Festival of Nature 2021. I'm Sean McCormick and I am delighted to be one of the hosts of this brilliant series and uh, today I'm going to be talking to two very interesting people. I watched a webinar from the University of Bath featuring their work last night. So I'm really um, happy to welcome them. The webinar was entitled Appreciating Nature and Others, What the Pandemic Has Taught Us About Wellbeing. And the first speaker was Dr. Catherine Burgess, who is the principal advisor for the People and Nature Survey run by Natural England. And secondly, we have Professor Paul Stallard, who is a leading childhood psychologist and works in the Department of Health for the University of Bath. So welcome Catherine and Paul, if you you're there. Hello. Thank you, Sean. Really, really good to have you here. Um, as I said, I really enjoyed the, the webinar last night, so I kind of wanted to run a few questions by you um, that maybe some of the audience had and that I had myself. So I think just to start, it'd be good to kind of get a summary of, of the work you're doing. Um, we'll start with you, Catherine, maybe. I know you talked last night about it, um, the People uh, and Nature Survey by Natural England. What is it telling us that's different to what we already knew or why was it, um, why was it a new survey this time around? Absolutely. So the, the major aim of the, the People and Nature Survey is to, is to gather information from a representative um, portion of the adult population of England um, into their engagement um, with the natural environment and, and health and wellbeing benefits that it provides. It's very much building on the work that we've done for the last decade within Natural England and, and looking at at this engagement with with natural spaces however the major change is that it's moved online um, and what this meant was that we could continue to gather data during the pandemic so what's different about it this time is that um, it's, it's the format of how we're we're conducting the survey um, and the additional um, questions that we've added to the survey around those specific covid impacts so before the pandemic we just asked questions generally about people's engagement with nature their pro-environmental attitudes and behaviors but we've been able to capture really important and timely information on the specific impacts of the pandemic and how it's affected different groups of society in terms of getting outdoors and what barriers it's presented. Yeah, I mean, the standout statistic for me that you mentioned, um, which we're hearing about, but it's good to kind of get a stat on that, was 82% of adults agreed that being in nature makes them happy. Um, so I think that's been just so much more important during the pandemic when we've been locked down and we, you know, early on we had an hour of permitted exercise. What were people telling you about how important that connection with nature was? I mean, incredibly important. I mean, that that stat sort of speaks for itself. And, and interestingly enough, it was very similar, um, a very similar finding from from the children's survey. Um, so we, we know and we, we knew before the pandemic that that getting outside um, did did make people feel happy. But what we've been able to, to gather from additional questions in the survey is what about being outside made them happy. So what was important in those spaces for their for their well-being? So we've been able to identify a, a number of things which probably for for a lot of us felt very very natural but it's, it's nice to have the the data to back it up so being outside socializing with people was was good for their well-being being outside exercising was good for their well-being and just generally noticing nature and wildlife being ever more important to people's well-being these are things that i certainly myself i, I took took for granted before the pandemic and what the survey is able to tell us is that people are starting to to notice those sort of those small simple things in life and, and really appreciating them again Brilliant. Yeah. And one of the things you talked about is how the restrictions, especially early on in the kind of strict lockdown period, hindered people's ability to get out and connect. Um, we'll talk about demographics in a bit, but what kind of impact did that have on people's well-being, mental health to, to not have open access to nature at that time? We still need to do a bit a bit more analysis, but you're right that the the numbers were really stark at the beginning of lockdown. I mean, we've, we we that was our lowest proportion of people who are reporting a visit in the last two weeks during April. And if we we cast our minds back to April 2020, it was the sunniest April on record. I mean, I've I've never I've never seen weather like it. So to have such sort of relatively low numbers of people getting outside, even though we were allowed outside once a day, people still felt that that the risk of contracting or, or spreading coronavirus was was too high. And that presented yeah. an actual barrier. And actually, when we look at, so we ask about 
factual barriers in the survey, but we also ask about concerns and, and worries. Um, and of course, spreading or contracting coronavirus was, was also the top worry at that point as well. So I think when we, we dig into that, there probably were, were quite high levels of anxiety within the population. Um, and, and certainly this is backed up by, by recent ONS data that they've they've released during the first three months of the pandemic where levels of anxiety were, were reportedly higher. So I think that's, yeah, those are the major things to, to glean. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk to Paul in a second about his work with kind of carers and children and things, but you uncovered some differences in kind of certain demographics, um, children and ethnic minority backgrounds in particular. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So in terms of um, the way we, we collect data for the People in Nature survey, so we, we make sure that this data is representative. So we are able to say meaningful things about different different groups within the population. So what we saw coming out in terms of um, people from white backgrounds and people from ethnic minority backgrounds was that there, there was a difference um, in the numbers that were reporting uh, a visit in the last two weeks. So um, people from from white backgrounds were, were more likely to have taken, taken a visit or spent more time outside. And we saw this within the, the children's data as well. And of course, ethnicity, ethnicity isn't the only defining factor here. Like there, there are lots of different things at play, but it's incredibly important to highlight because even though there are, there are other factors, this is still a trend that we, we did see within our previous 10 year data set. Um, but this also coincides with, with different income groups. So you are much more likely to have taken a visit if you're from a, a higher income group. So um, basic, basic income groups over, over the, the po poverty line. So over about £15,000 we would class as above the poverty line, depending on which poverty line you, you look at, but they, they tend to be just below £15,000. So when you're looking at groups above that, you're much more likely to see people going outside. And then when you look at groups below the poverty line, those have the highest proportion of people not going outside. So it, it really is very, very stark to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, perhaps we'll move on to Paul's research and then come back together and talk about kind of solutions and, and next steps from both of your, your pieces of work. Um, but Paul, really interesting um, to hear your kind of um, research as well. Can you tell us a little bit about it and um, kind of what the, the kind of main findings were? Yeah, well, we were interested in trying to understand the effects of COVID lockdown, social isolation on the sort of psychological health of um, carers of children. We were particularly interested in this group because obviously carers um, have got their own worries about COVID and finances and health, et cetera, but they also had the added responsibility of looking after children and a major role in caring for the family. So we had an online survey and we asked um, people to fill this out. Uh, but we also included a question in the survey where we asked whether they felt that there were any positives to come out of the pandemic and the social distancing restrictions. And this wasn't what we were anticipating, but to our surprise, we found that almost 90% of those who completed our survey could identify various positives which had come out of COVID and the sort of social isolation and social distancing restrictions. And when we looked at this in a little bit more detail, they seemed to fall into the area of what we call post-traumatic growth, where people have reappraised the experience of COVID, the trauma of COVID, in a positive way. And so some of the sort of the main themes which we identified in the survey were people um, commenting on how relationships with family members have been strengthened as a result of being closer together and spending more time with each other. But there was a greater appreciation of life. So it gave people an opportunity to reassess priorities and to really reconsider what was important for them and to reconnect with some of the small pleasures of life, which we often take for granted. Yeah. yeah. They've encouraged a number to sort of develop a healthier lifestyle where they sort of were able to um, slow down and enjoy the quiet of what was going on around them. Social growth in terms of appreciating the role of others and understanding more about the inequalities and that some people didn't have space 
and also this issue about sort of environmental awareness, recognizing um, less power use, quieter environment, better, and also appreciating nature much more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the um, startling statistics from your work, I guess, were you said that twenty five percent of of carers had symptoms suggesting clinical depression, and one in five or twenty percent um, of clinical anxiety. So that's quite a you know we we all were kind of struggling a bit, but um, it's quite stark to hear you know that level of um, of problems with mental health and and um, emotional well being because of the pandemic, but definitely so so positive to see that I uh, certainly for me you know reframing kind of what's important in life and uh, what you want to focus on and what changes you want to make afterwards seems to be a real positive outcome um from it so yeah 90 percent saying that is is pretty impressive yeah and um back to you Catherine for for a second um what are the kind of you know what are the next steps what it's great to know the statistics and and kind of um how this has affected people and and kind of what people say now about their relationship with nature but what are kind of natural england doing to maybe iron out or even out some of those inequalities in terms of access to nature what are what are the plans in place after doing this work so the major the major plans in place after this evidence gathering so there's gonna be two strands here so obviously the the people in nature survey can can answer a lot of questions but it will inevitably throw up more questions so part of the the aims of this survey is to identify those evidence gaps and try and enhance the survey even further so communicate with our users with with local stakeholder groups what information are we not collecting that we really should be so that's one strand the next strand is obviously to to use this evidence and mobilize it um, to where it really it really needs to go um, and this is only going to happen through effective partnerships and these effective partnerships we've already got a number of them across government so our involvement in green social prescribing along with public health england um, and ministry of housing communities and local government and a, a whole number of other other partners involved in that in that project um, but then also things like our work on green infrastructure so we have a green a dedicated green infrastructure team who will be able to take some findings from the survey and those will be able to inform how we make high quality green spaces close to where people live so whilst we're sort of very much in, in the midst of of the evidence gathering at the moment with the survey the intention is always to mobilize that data and get it to places that it needs it needs to go to to make a, a real difference on the ground yeah i was going to bring up kind of um social prescribing or nature prescribing we're hearing about it in kind of in the media i guess but um how widespread is it do either of you know paul of you are yeah it's very much um a sort of developing area i think i think people are increasingly recognizing the importance of sort of social prescribing and there are now a lot of initiatives taking place where this is happening up and down the country so it's a developing area and a very important one in terms of mental health yeah yeah i know from running a community conservation organization myself with eating wildlife group you know we try and make an effort to get into um, kind of underserved areas or areas with kind of um, different demographics to the usual people who show up to our events and things. But what advice would you give people, you know, working in communities to try and um, access or to try and provide for um, those kind of underserved communities? To be perfectly honest, I think we, we take a lot of advice coming from those those community community groups. It really is the People in Nature Survey operates at a fairly national level and we hope to get that data more granular as time goes on. But actually what we want to hear about it is from those local groups. Um, what are their experiences on the ground? Um, what do they see in their sort of local green and, and blue spaces and, and those barriers occurring that we might not have picked up on? Um, so I think it's, it's very much a, a two way street with that. And, and we can obviously communicate what we found at a fairly high level in terms of those specific barriers and particularly breaking down those barriers by by different groups of the population. I think that's that's really important because that that is very apparent in our data set. Not everyone experiences the same barriers and whether those be related to facilities, accessibility or quality or safety concerns, it really does vary by different population groups. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul, you mentioned last night about kind of gaps in um, knowledge gaps or kind of limitations of the study that you've done to date. So what kind of plans do you guys have for kind of further work and, and um, what areas do you need to kind of fill in those gaps? 
Well, yeah, our, our study does have a number of limitations. So we have to be quite cautious in the way we interpret our findings. But I do think that what our findings are suggesting is that there does seem to be a, a relationship, which we're talking about now, between positive mental health and an opportunity to appreciate what we have and what we can do rather than focusing on what we are not able to do, which has been a lot of the sort of coverage in the sort of COVID sort of um, press. So for me, I think that one of the big take home messages from our work is to appreciate the things which are there and which you can enjoy, which you can connect with, and that somehow being able to connect with those, to notice them, to enjoy them, does help you to put in perspective what life is currently like and it can have a protective factor on psychological well-being. Yeah, that's a perfect summary. I was going to wrap up with that question. What is your take-home message? What is your kind of um, kind of the impact of, of nature and, and what people should do coming out of this really, really tough period? Catherine, would you have anything to add to, to Paul's kind of words of wisdom there? I, I'd whole, wholly like to echo <laughs> Paul said, I think that's fantastic. Um, what I would like to say is that you know, we, we all know how important nature is for for our health and well-being. Um, and both from, from our survey and from Paul's, we, we've seen how much more important it's become. So what I'd, I'd just like to echo is that people keep on engaging with nature and noticing wildlife um, and, and being sort of present in that regard before we go back to a life probably with a, a lot more a lot more distractions um so i really hope that these trends continue um and that we can really start to address the inequalities in access to nature both through the survey and, and through our partnership working yeah brilliant thanks for that guys i think we'll, we'll wrap it up there but where can people find out more about the work that you guys are doing um catherine so you can find out more on our gov.uk page if you just search for the people in nature survey gov.uk it will come up we also have a dedicated user hub um, and this is just primarily for people to sign up for, for updates from us but you can also become more involved in the survey if you'd like to um, ask about adding additional questions certain type of analyses that we might want to do it's a, it's a real interactive user hub um, so you can if you search people in nature survey user hub that that should come up and you can you can sign up Great. I will have a look at that myself. And Paul, where can people find out more about your work? Um, you can sort of log in to sort of search for me at the University of Bath and you should have some links to these sort of publications. Or you can just go on to the uh, British Journal of Psychiatry where we published this paper earlier this year. Search for my name and you'll be able to read the study in full. Brilliant. Well, thanks, guys. It's been absolutely fascinating to talk to you. It's a great topic and um, really appreciate your time for the Festival of Nature. Thank you. Thanks very thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thanks all for tuning in, guys. Bye now.